Hi there friends. Today's video is all about the best way to get your canvas or your foundation to looking very natural, not looking cakey. Sometimes as we age, we have wrinkles and texture and all those things that just drive us insane, but we still want to have a perfected canvas. We still want our skin to look really good, but this video is going to focus on skin looking like skin taking care of our imperfections, but still that our skin looks very natural. So before we get started, I wanna show you what I have on because in every video I always get asked. And today I kind of switched it up. I do have on a really cute dress. I'm really excited about this dress because it is so darn comfortable. It's flowy, it's got a lot of bright colors, so it's perfect for summer. And I just really was excited to show it to you. And also the shoes that I'm wearing with it are very, very comfortable shoes. They're kind of slides. I will have all of the makeup that I'm not talking about, which is the eye makeup and the jewelry, the press on nails, everything that I'm not talking about in the video today will be listed and linked below with all all of the other information about the products we do use today. If you're new to my channel, I want to say hello, welcome in. I'm glad that you're here and I hope that you do decide to subscribe. And if everybody would just take a minute and hit the little like button and the bell icon, those things really help me with the YouTube algorithm. All right, that is it for the introduction. Let's get into how we get a very natural looking perfected foundation base. One thing I want to stress to you is that if you're having texture, if your foundation is falling apart, if you are noticing that, you know, you're getting modeled on your foundation, that's really about the prep that you do. That prep can start the night before you even get up in the morning and do your foundation. And that prep includes making sure that your skin is very hydrated, making sure that the next morning that you exfoliate your skin a little bit, maybe with a washcloth, you're getting a little bit of that dead skin off. Just make sure that you're taking care of your skin prep. You always want to make sure that you're moisturizing well that you're using your SPF and so then you get to this point where we're at right now which is let's start off with some sort of a primer I did recently put this primer from Elizabeth Mott into a video all about primers for mature women this one is the thank me later face primer Blur blurring primer with an spf of 30. this one although it is not it does not necessarily say that it's a blurring primer i still feel like it's fairly hydrating and i do like that about it, it fills in my pores very evenly and all you need to do when you're using a primer is make sure that it's going completely across your face, but the places where you have texture, like mine is right here on my cheeks, where my cheeks seem to be falling a little bit as I age, right there on my nose, and then right there on my chin. So you really don't need a ton of primer, but you do need to make sure that you fill in those places. And then the rest of it is just insurance for your foundation to stay on because what primer does, especially a silicone or a dimethicone based primer, is it makes a barrier between your foundation and your skincare so that your foundation doesn't get sucked into your skin during the day. And that's really how we get the longevity of our foundation. The next product will not be a surprise to any of you that have been with me for any amount of time. It's the Pixie by Petra Color Corrector. This one is in Brightening Peach. They also have one that is an apricot that is a little bit different, a little bit more orange instead of peach. I have been talking about this for years because what happens is we have a tendency to apply too much foundation because we think that we need more coverage when in fact what we need to do is spot cover and that is very important. So I'm just using a flat paddle brush from Sigma and I'm just going in there and what I'm going to do especially around my eyes and my dark circles is I'm going to take down that darkness and I'm going to very, very lightly coat all of the discoloration on my face that gives me troubles and I feel like does not quite get covered unless I use a ton of foundation. And that's not what we're about. We're about using minimal amount and hopefully getting a very perfected canvas without making everything look cakey because we've got too much. So I'm gonna use this on the redness I'm going to use it on any dark spots as well. And I'm just going to thinly layer all of those spots in order for them to be hidden 
even before we start with foundation so at this point you might be saying well then why the heck do we use foundation well foundation is what we use all over to even this is what we're using to disguise so as promised i am sharing with you how to use the covergirl aqua smooth cream makeup this is a makeup that i recently found because one of you shared it with me and i'm so excited about this this makeup is great for mature skin because when our skin gets older it gets drier and a lot of people get you know breakthrough or an oily t-zone combination skin but the majority of women over 45 50 they end up getting dry skin because of menopause it's just a fact of life so cream makeup can be your very best friend but the problem with cream makeup is you do not want to use too much. So I am using this brush right here from Nikki LaRose and BK Beauty. It's a rounded brush. I noticed that this was recently back in stock, so I'm hoping that it is even now. I really haven't found another brush that I'm terribly impressed with. Although when I do the other side, and I'm going to be doing the other side with just a regular foundation a regular liquid foundation i am going to try and use this little stipple brush from elf just to give you guys a little bit of an alternative that isn't quite as expensive as one of these brushes so i'm going to be barely dipping into the product and then i'm going to go up and i'm going to just start swirling and i'm going to be doing it on this side of my face and i do not want to put a lot of pro product on but i do want to swirl in order for it to cover as much as it can and the nice thing about having a cream is it is going to cover a lot of real estate here so we are just swirling and we are bringing it all together we're going to put on one coat and then we might go back in and use it a little bit strategically where we need more coverage but the biggest thing is is we are using the tiniest amount you think you can possibly use and the difference with this cream makeup is is it will spread out it will go a long way as it warms up on your skin so making sure that using the brush you aren't dipping back in over and over again thinking that you need more than you actually do I am just swirling and really I barely tapped in there twice and I've already pretty much perfected this side. I know that there are some parts that I'm going to want to do a little bit more to, but so far so good. Now I am going to pick up a little bit more because my neck does require a little bit more and I'm going to go down my neck and blend all of this in. I'm also using the makeup across my chest because my chest has so much discoloration. But again, try to use even less than you think you might need. I don't know if you can see or not, but I sure can see that my skin looks like skin. It does not look like I've got a bunch of makeup on. It just looks very pretty. And as you continue to buff it in, it's going to look even better. Now, like I said, there might be spot, spots, pots, where you might need a little bit more. Mine is usually right down here in this cheek area by the nose and just buff, buff, buff. That way you're not using more than you think you need and you will be surprised how quickly it covers with so little product. All right, I haven't done this before. So I've, I've used this technique with a liquid, but I haven't used this brush before. So we're going to go into new territory here. I just don't have another brush that I think would work for this. So on this side of my face, I'm going to be using the new e.l.f. Soft Glam Satin Foundation, which I have been really enjoying a lot. So, you know, it's really pretty. It covers really well and it lasts really well as well. And so I put a tiny, tiny bit on the back of my hand and I'm picking it up with the brush and again I'm just going to start stippling around and this is a little bit different because it does have the stipple end to it as you can see it's kind of modeled there we're not going to leave it like that we're going to just kind of stipple 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 and we're going to go around everything I think that if you have a rounded brush that is an eyeshadow brush it would probably be your best bet to do this with this is really one that you want to be able to kind of circle and buff. And I can do this with this brush, but it's not as nice as the one I was using from Nikki LaRose. And this covers really quickly, as you can see. I didn't pick up much product. I'm going to pick up quite a bit more and try to do down the neck. And I probably will have to get a little bit more out even to do my decollete or my chest. And making your canvas look as beautiful as it can because mature skin needs a little bit of extra help 
We don't want it to look cakey. We don't want it to look like makeup. We still want it to look like skin, but we also really want it to look beautiful and flawless. I actually didn't do a half bad job with this brush. I do like the other brush better, but this one did okay. I just feel like, you know, continue to buff, continue to do what you need to do to push it into your skin, but still you can see that the skin looks like skin. I'm gonna show you both of these sides. You can see my discoloration, my freckles and my spots on this side. It still looks like skin. Now we're gonna do a concealer. This is the e.l.f. Camo Concealer in Light Peach. This is one of my favorites at the drugstore. This is a new one because I had had mine for so long. I was like, ooh, I better get that taken care of. Now, that is super light. I am going to look like a raccoon if I don't do something else. I'm gonna take my Tower 28 and I'm going to mix these two together a little bit because this one's a little bit darker. What I have found is that it's important to keep your under eyes the kind of the same color as your foundation or your other skin because if you get too white, you are going to look like you've just got these white circles on your eyes. So doing this, I'm just gonna kind of pat this in and then we're gonna let that dry, which is really important, or at least dry down some before we're gonna go in and completely really blend that. So just spread that across, but here's the thing. This inner corner right here got way too much. So I'm gonna take my brush and I'm just going to pick up a little bit with the brush. Tools of the trade, right? As we let that concealer set, let's do a little bit of bronzer. This one is the Butter Glow Physici Physicians Formula. This is the light medium contour wand. I think that this is probably one of the best dupes for the Charlotte Tilbury. I'm just gonna pick this up on a NYX brush. Very easy to work with. I'm gonna pat that in my hand so that when it gets on my forehead or on my cheeks it's not going to look like too much so we're just going to go where the sun hits our face and with me and my high forehead I'm also going to buff this towards the hairline and I'm going to go right into the hair to disguise the you know like you don't want a line of demarcation where it's white and then you got your bronzer so I really take time to buff that in and make sure that this looks like I just have kind of a little bit of a tan there, bring it down onto your forehead, blending, and then bring it across your cheeks towards the top of your cheeks where the sun would normally hit you, across your nose, across your chin, and of course down on the decollete where we always get a ton of sun. Once I do that, I'm gonna just take the warmth of my finger and I'm going to blend in the concealer. And I'm not going to blend this away. That's one of the things that I think that as mature women that have really dark circles, we think, oh, she's used so much. What are we going to do about using that much? It's going to crease during the day. Well, we have to set it. I mean, there's just no way getting around that. So I want you to pay attention to letting it set down. And then I want you also to pay attention to using a little bit of powder strategically, which I'll show you in just a second. But it's important to remember that powder is not your enemy. It does look drying if you already have dry skin. Yes, but there is a way to combat that, which I'll show you in just a second. Now we've set that down. As I am looking at the blended part in the mirror, I feel like there's just too much brightness right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that bronzer and I'm just gonna come right up underneath my eye just a little bit. And I know that's weird to even talk about, but it's just a little bit of blending so that we don't look like we have this round circular part that is just our eyes. Um, that just doesn't look natural, I don't think. It can look brightened, but it also can look too stark. Let's blush it out with this new Morphe. These are the Huphoric Rush blushes. These are a very glowy, dewy brush blush. It's like a balm. This one is in Pleasured. These are all very pretty colors. Let me just swatch this for you so you can see. Isn't that a pretty color? Kind of a medium pink, just very pretty. So I'm gonna use a very fluffy brush and then I'm going to go high on the cheeks, very, very high on the cheeks up towards the eye again and just buff that out. 
the lower you go and yes i did get this from watching the lady that does rms beauty um i went and delved into that after jen phelps video can you tell I love Jen Phelps? I think I mention her in every single video I do, but I really appreciated her take on being able to use blush in such a way that lifts your face because if you come down, you're gonna pull your face down as a mature woman anyway. So I am using it high as I can, and I'm also bringing it up here towards the bronzer because we just want a cohesive look, and even putting blush up by our bronzer gives it a little bit more of a pinky hue to it or a red hue to it. That way you look like it's very sun-kissed, like you've almost got a really light sunburn instead of it being orange at all. One more little swipe across there to make sure that there is no creasing before I go in with the powder. And I very recently told you about the L'Oreal True Match powder that I'm in love with. I'm using a powder puff and I will make sure that I list all of the tools for you as well as everything that I've used for the makeup. This is in C3 and I wish that it had a little bit darker of a color, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to load up the powder puff. That's quite a bit of powder, but I'm gonna tap it into my hand so that there's not as much there. It's not gonna go on as much. And then I'm going to push it into the area instead of swiping, instead of bouncing, I'm actually pushing. That is going to do two things. It's going to help that area not crease because it has enough powder on there, but it's also going to help the powder puff lift up any excess oil or any excess moisture that you might have up underneath there. Now take that powder puff and go on to the pores that we were talking about. We're going to diffuse those pores. We're going to make them go away. And this is what keeps the longevity of your makeup going as well. Makeup artists swear by this trick is that for longevity of makeup, for it to be on there for hours, you need to push in the powder. And the reason is, is because it can melt away during the day. It can wipe away all of those things that we don't want it to do but if you push the powder in you're actually pushing the makeup in you're making it all melt together my face just looks absolutely flawless no pores and i don't really have any powder left on here what i'm doing now is i'm just making everything melt together and making sure that it looks beautiful all right as the last step what we're going to do is we're going to take the flower beauty day glow this is a balmy product as well. So we're combating the look of that powder a little bit with putting this on top of it. This is so, so pretty for giving us just a glow without any highlighter really. I mean, it's gonna look like highlighter, but it's more of a glow than anything. And I'm just going to put this on the very high points of the cheeks. And what happens with this is as you turn your head, people are gonna notice that you have this glow Whereas if you are just putting it everywhere all over your face, then everybody's going to be like, oh, her makeup went awry or whatever you want to say. So we're just strategically placing all these things. Normally I do this underneath my blush, but I really wanted to show you how that blush looked and then how it looked with the powder on top of it. And this is just a very pretty glow. Now take that glow and you can put it on your cupid's bow. And when I'm at my cupid's bow, I just touch my my tip of my nose just a little bit. I normally don't do that very much, but just a tiny bit brings a little bit of light there. So Cupid's bow, a little bit on the nose. You can do a little bit on the chin if you want to, and you can bring a little bit into the forehead if you like that as well. All of that powder, how do we combat that? Grab yourself some of this. This is the best setting spray at the drugstore for making your makeup melt. And it's also got a really nice mist to it, which is great. This is the Neutrogena Radiant Setting Spray. You need to shake it up and then you're just gonna kind of drench your face. You're not gonna make it, you know, droplets fall off or anything, but you're gonna be pretty generous with this. Take your puff one more time and anywhere you feel like you got a little bit too much, just touch it. This makes the foundation, the powder, any makeup in between, it makes it all come together and all melt together. And then it also gives the added benefit of having a little bit of a glow and keeping your makeup in place. I just think it's so lovely. Maybelline Lip Liner in Dusty Rose. This is really close to my own lip color, kind of a your lips but better situation. So I'm going to outline my lips with that.
Then I'm going to take a brighter than normal lipstick, L'Oreal Age Perfect. Let me see if I can find the color of it. It's called Subtle Primrose. I don't think it's subtle, at least on my skin tone, it's not super subtle. It's quite pretty. It's got um, a lot of pink in there. We're going to use that. What's so pretty about this lipstick is it's very hydrating. One of the things I do find though is that this color doesn't necessarily stay as long as some other ones that might be a little bit more matte. So all I want you to do is blot. This is one of my old rags I use for makeup all the time, so don't worry about it. And then I want you to put another coat on. What that does is that initial coat will kind of act as a stain and then this one acts as the regular lipstick. And then I just for fun wanted to grab the new NYX Butter Gloss Bling. I think these are so pretty. This color is called She Got Money. So this is going to be a little bit more of a blingy color. Right there in the center. A little bit of glitter. So the lips are a little bit more prominent today, which I really like. All right, you guys, I hope that you agree that that was a fairly easy routine to keep your foundation looking flawless but looking very much like skin so what do you think i think that because we used such a small amount because we relied on the color corrector that it just turned out so that it does look like skin it looks like this is a summer sun-kissed look because of the way we place the blush and the bronzer and then we have that pretty lip that kind of sets everything off so i hope that you did enjoy seeing this this was really fun for me to do please give it a thumbs up up and tell me what you thought down in the comment section and if you're going to try this routine yourself and if you're going to try either the aqua smooth makeup from covergirl or the new elf soft glam both of them i think are very pretty by the way just so you know when i set this makeup like this i'm going to have this on all day long when i do the powder on it it's not going to come off i really think that both of these are really good this is about application and whether the foundation looks good on application is up to the foundation but as far as the way it wears and its longevity that can really be about the way that we set our face and I want you to just kind of remember that all right everybody thanks so much for being here with me today please give this video a thumbs up on your way out of here love you so very much please take care goodbye my friends